Kathleen West, known as Kitty Cat West online, was a full-time mother and wife with a sultry and ludicrous side hustle. By all counts, she was interesting, confident, and strong. But on the morning of a cold winter's day, she was found dead outside of her own home. The evidence left around her suggested that it could have been an accident, while on the other hand, other key pieces of information screamed that it was murder. And in the end, the fate of another human would all come down to some very concerning yet rather innocuous clues. Welcome or welcome back to Coffee House Crime, folks. My name is Adrian, and today we're looking at the bewildering case of Kitty Cat West. I'm back with another very highly requested case today, and I can see why to be honest. Although someone has been found guilty in this case, the evidence is very circumstantial. So, my one request for you in today's case is to listen to the evidence very, very carefully. And in your own conclusion, let me know what you think in the comments down below. By the way, it feels like a lot of information was missed by the mainstream media in this case, so even if you have heard of this one before, you'll likely learn a few new details here. Anyway, before we begin, did you know that I post true crime and strange cases here weekly? So if that sounds like your kind of thing, please consider subscribing to the channel. Right, no more small talk. Please grab yourself a coffee, pull up a seat, and get ready for the deep dive. This is the case of Kitty Cat West. We're heading to the southeast of the United States, to a place I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Alabama has many informal nicknames, including the Yellowhammer State, the Heart of Dixie, and the Cotton State. And of course, it is all popularized by the well-known country track Sweet Home Alabama. Both agriculture and aquaculture are large parts of the economy here. Eggs, cattle, fish, and peanuts are all major exports, and surprisingly, in the year 2008, it produced more than 130 million pounds of catfish. The more you know, I guess. Interesting fact, but it's actually a class B felony to wrestle a bear here, and the law explicitly forbids people from engaging in bear wrestling matches. However, if you do fancy a throwdown with Winnie the Pooh, no worries. You'll just have to jump across the state line into Mississippi for that one. Found almost dead centre of the state lies a small city named Calera. It's located just south of Birmingham, and runs along Highway 65 on the way to Montgomery. And, as you can likely imagine for a rural southern city, it's generally a quiet and peaceful place to live. With a current population of around 16,000 residents, you could fit everyone in this city inside New York Times Union Center. However, that may not be for long, because with its population tripling in a single decade, it's the fastest growing city in all of Alabama. Now, I couldn't tell you too much about Calera's economy, but it seems to primarily serve the local quarry, which is operated by the Mississippi Lime Company. Otherwise, it seems like it's a place for commuters to live while they work in the bigger city, Birmingham. It's here in Calera that we find the West family, comprising of mother, Kat, father, Jeff, and their daughter, Lola. Now, today's story is all about Kat, so let's start with who she is. Born on February the 15th, 1975, to her mother Nancy and father John, Kathleen was an only child. She was raised in Florida and loved the outdoors, and although she was sporty and confident as a child, she was also madly obsessed with her dolls. To add to this, from a very young age, she was infatuated with the idea of being a mother. After graduating from Bloomingdale High School and moving into her teenage years, Kathleen began to take up modeling on the side. This is when she grew a fascination with Marilyn Monroe, and moving forward, she often tried to impersonate her style. This helped her become well known for her so-called jaw-dropping beauty, and by all counts, she was a great looking woman. And in addition to her physical attractiveness, was a wild and carefree personality, something that many men would find irresistible. But Kat did have her own personal problems to overcome. She unfortunately suffered from alcoholism, which was a recurring problem that she often fell into. To add to this, Kat also suffered from bipolar disorder, which, as some of you may know, can be very disruptive to a person's life. Bipolar disorder is a mental health condition that is commonly misconceived as a wild and rapid fluctuation in a person's mood. However, this is actually very rarely the case. A person with this condition will typically experience depressive and manic phases that can last for several weeks, but actually there are long periods of relative normality in between. Severity varies massively between people, with some experiencing very little disruption in their lives. Meanwhile, others need medication and therapy to get by. 
However, by the time Kat was in her late 20s, she had managed to get her condition into a medicated, manageable, and well-controlled state. Moving forward, it was in the year 2004 that Kat met a man she felt was worthy of her love, and the man's name was William Jeff West. Now, Jeff is a very quiet sort. He was calm, cool, and collected, which was quite the opposite to the confident and fiery Kat. And born in the year 1974, he was only slightly older than she was. It was in the year 1992 that he enlisted into the army as a military police officer, before being promoted to a detailed army recruiter and, finally, a recruiting center commander. Alongside his military job, he attended Columbia Southern University from 2010 through to 2019. While here, he achieved a bachelor's degree in business administration, a master's degree in criminal justice administration, and, finally, a master's degree in crisis, emergency, and disaster management. As you can very likely imagine, Jeff really was a well disciplined brain box. And after leaving the military and college, he then became a security officer and a campus corporal. The man already had two children from a previous relationship, but that connection had now come to a close. Jeff's hobbies included hunting, fishing, and focusing on the family he had, with his attitude being both responsible and well-disciplined. Now, at first, friends were very surprised to see the two in a relationship. I mean, opposites do sometimes attract, but these guys seemed like a very unlikely pair. Where Kat was the life and soul of the party, and wanted everything the world had to offer, Jeff was much more complacent, and often tended to blend into the background. So, it was an even bigger surprise when, only four months after dating, the two suddenly married in Las Vegas. Despite rushing into a legal partnership, the relationship and marriage fortunately remained positive and constructive. And just one year later, in the year 2005, Jeff and Kat welcomed their first and only child to the world. The young couple were very happy with their arrangements, and their daughter, who was affectionately named Lola, was brought into a happy and loving household. Moving forward several more years to the year 2015, 15, a new home for the family would be custom designed and built. And in fact, if you were to go looking, Google Maps even shows a street view of it being built. This cheerful plot of land turned out to be a beautifully built four-bedroom, three-bathroom home. Enough space for a family of three to really spread out. And I know the resolution on this photo sucks, but, of course, just for Kat, the master bedroom even had a Marilyn Monroe quote written on the wall. Neighbours said the household seemed content, but they were very quiet and often kept to themselves. Anyway, to the outside world, the Wests were a perfectly happy family. By now, Jeff had settled into his role as a campus police corporal, and the money paid very well too being enough to support the family of three. His role included maintaining the safety of all visitors, finding potential security and safety hazards, being observant, and responding to any criminal activity. To add to this, Jeff was also approved to carry a firearm at all times and did nothing to breach that trust. And by all counts, he was a pretty good cookie, at least at that time. Moving over to Kathleen, her Facebook profile described her as a full-time wife and mummy, but truth be told, she did actually have a part-time job on the side. Now, many sources like to describe her as a woman who lived a double life as an online exhibitionist, but to be honest with you, I don't buy that story. I mean, sure, she was a model and a cam girl, but this is hardly mysterious. Posting under the name Kitty Cat West, Cat often centered her content around inspiration from Marilyn Monroe, and her content, which could be found on OnlyFans for $15.99 a month, would often include suggestive lingerie photos. The so-called Kitty Cat West would also post content on her Twitter and on her Instagram, which at the time had massed over 51,000 followers. She was also a member of a Facebook group called The Cougar Club, a place for cougars who are, quote, beautiful, intelligent, classy older women who men of all ages find attractive. Now, despite the sultry content, Kathleen's side hustle did not cause any discord or discomfort between the couple. In fact, Jeff was even happy to help her run the business, and often took pictures for her subscribers. Kathleen felt both lucky and appreciated, and although glamour modelling wasn't the most typical career for a mother and wife, it did help boost her already confident and bubbly personality. Yes, the West family had it all, and while they may not have been massively rich or successful, they seemed content and happy. However, as you may already know, this period of comfort would not not last forever. Having children can be tough for a variety of reasons. Everyone tends to focus on the burden of responsibility towards the kids, but one thing that is often overlooked is the well-being of the parents themselves. Now, don't quote me on this because I'm not a parent, but looking after your children while also juggling a job leaves very limited room for you to have your own fun. Now, Jeff and Kathleen recognized this, 
And of course, they did still love their daughter, but they still needed quality time to themselves and as a husband and wife. It was on Friday the 12th of January 2018 that they were practicing this way of living, as tonight was date night. Handing their daughter over to her grandparents for the weekend, Jeff and Kat headed down to Papadou Seafood Kitchen, found in downtown Birmingham. After their meal, they travelled to Red Zone Bar and Grill, and after having a couple of drinks here, the two lovers made their way back home. While making the drive back, they stopped at r and Wine and Liquor Store, which is located just north of Calera. Surveillance footage shows Jeff buying himself a bottle of Jameson whiskey, while Kat selects a bottle of lucid absinthe for herself. The couple seemed very happy here, and even playful. The camera captures Jeff giving his wife a soft slap on the butt, before then making their way back home. Nothing appeared out of the ordinary, and the cashier even thought that they both made a great couple. Once home, the two continued drinking, and it's reported that they both had about five or six drinks throughout the night. Approaching 10 o'clock, Jeff posted this image to Instagram, and while here, Jeff took several photos of Kat for her OnlyFans account. However, shortly after this, their otherwise good and happy nights would take a very terrible turn. January 13th, 2018. The time was about 5am, and it was the morning after date night. The sun was rising, and fog was lifting off of the fields. And despite it being a cold winter's morning, Alabama was preparing for an otherwise sunny weekend. However, not both of the West family parents were sound asleep in their bed. And instead, a neighbour would make a very gruesome discovery. A young woman named McCausha lived a couple of streets away. With the job that started so early in the morning, she was one of the first few people out on the road. In order to get to Highway 65, she had to drive past the West household. And that was when, while passing by, she noticed something peculiar out on the road. Makosha gasped after taking a closer look, as unfortunately, she realised it appeared to be the body of a middle-aged woman, who didn't appear to be moving. Now, I don't think that anyone is ready for such a sight so early in the morning, especially me if I haven't had my coffee. So after panicking and not knowing what to do, she rushed back home to get her father. The two returned moments later to find the woman lying face down in the street. The man reached down to touch her back, but sadly, she was cold to the touch. And after making further checks, he realised that she was no longer breathing. If you haven't guessed yet, the body sadly belonged to Kathleen West. She was found across the street from her own home and tragically had passed away. Investigators confirmed that she was found only wearing a sports bra. She had bled heavily from her head, and a mobile phone and a bottle of absinthe were found next to her body. Police officers secured the scene pretty much immediately, and neighbours all around were very shocked to see the commotion unfold. But there was one significant person missing through all of this, and that was Jeff West. Now, Jeff was actually still in his own home, but apparently he had no idea what was going on outside. He woke up to find his wife missing, and then began to look around the house for her. That is when police officers came knocking at the property, to which Jeff opened the door. However, strangely enough, he acted very strange in front of officers, and after being told that his wife was found dead outside, he appeared all too calm. Right, so we're going to spend a lot of time focusing on the details of the crime scene, as there are several articles of evidence that both support and reject Jeff's involvement in Kat's death. First of all, police officers believed that Kat had died sometime between 10pm Friday and 5am Saturday. Jeff confirmed that this was the correct time frame in which she could have died, but he also rejected any idea that perhaps she could have been murdered. Jeff was also able to confirm that Kat was alive at around 10pm, as he had taken photos of her wearing a pink bra, pink underwear, and pink heels around that time. And although those images aren't available to the public, investigators were able to confirm their existence by taking a look at her phone. According to Jeff, the night had been pleasant up until that moment in time, but shortly after the photo shoot, the two unfortunately began to argue. Apparently, Kat was spending too much time looking at her phone. She wasn't being present in the moment with him, and that upset Jeff. In response to this, he grabbed the mobile phone out of her hands, opened the front door, and then threw it out into the front garden. Kat was angry with him, but Jeff didn't bother waiting around to argue any further. 
He apparently made his way upstairs and went straight to bed at around 10.30pm, not waking up any time after this until around 5am. Recalling the night, he assumes that she must have gone outside to retrieve her mobile phone. Jeff stated that he woke up around 5am the next morning to the noise of police cars and a barking dog, and that is when he received a knock at the front door. However, this is the first concerning clue left behind. It is believed that this was a lie fabricated by Jeff, as the neighbour who found Kathleen's body told officers she'd seen him pacing back and forth inside his home while she was on the phone to 911. She distinctively remembered this as she thought it was very odd at the time. Now, officers were not sure what to make of the situation. They initially assumed that Kat's death was most likely accidental, and that she probably became so inconsolably drunk that she'd fallen over while outside, resulting in her death from hitting her own head. And this sort of inebriation-induced behaviour apparently wasn't out of character for her either. She would often wander around while drunk, and was often energetic. Dancing and jumping around on the family's trampoline was a fairly typical example here. But after an official autopsy was conducted, and detectives widened their investigation to include potential homicide, things were no longer appearing to add up between Jeff and Kat. An autopsy concluded that, at the time of her death, Kat had a blood alcohol reading of 0.23%, which was three times over the legal limit. And although semen was detected on a swab taken, the sample could not successfully be matched to anyone due to a low sperm count. The forensic pathologist who completed the autopsy ruled that the cause of her death was blunt force trauma to the head. He further explained that, due to Kat's height of 5 foot 4, it was highly unlikely that her head wound would have been created by a fall. He also highlighted that the length of the wound was consistent with the length of the liquor bottle found at the crime scene. When Police Sergeant Melhoff arrived at the scene, he noticed that her mobile phone and the bottle of absinthe next to Kat's body was in a very unusual position. The bottle was neatly laid down and parallel to the phone, and if Kat accidentally fell to her death, then it would have been extremely unlikely to fall in this position. The only conclusion the officer could come up with is that it must have been placed like that by someone else. In the meanwhile, forensic analysis on the bottle of absinthe found a positive match of Jeff's thumb and ring fingerprints. The fingerprints were in a downward orientation, meaning that Jeff must have held it by the neck. And to add to this concerning detail, the analysis also found traces of Kat's blood on the bottom of the bottle. It is worth noting here that this does not necessarily mean that Jeff held the bottle in an aggressive manner, and he may have grabbed it downward and by the neck when pulling the bottle out of the shopping bag. Another strange and concerning clue, but officers also noticed two separate pools of blood outside of the family home. There was one pool of blood on the family lawn, and another in the street where she was found. This means that if Kat had accidentally died on her own accord, she would have had to fall over, suffer a significant amount of hemorrhaging, get herself back up, walk across the street, and then collapse again to bleed out. And to officers, this simply didn't make any logical sense. Taking a look into the digital forensics of the night, the health app on Kat's phone detailed her final movements to be between 10.45 and 10.54pm. She moved a distance of 64 meters before all activity ceased. The home's security system confirmed that the door was opened and then closed again at 10.54pm, which matches well with her final movements. It then opened again at 1.51am, and remained open until it was closed at 5.12am. Jeff's mobile phone also confirmed his final movement of 18 steps to be between 11.03 and 11.10pm, which, by the way, was just 7 minutes after the door was shut and Kat's movements ended. The next movement detailed on Jeff's mobile phone was the next morning at 5.12 to 5.22am, in which he moved a total of 59 steps. Now, this time frame coincides with the front door being shut, but what it does not explain is what precisely happened at 1.51am when the door was opened. It is worth noting that both mobile health app devices only confirm when there definitely was movement. For example, Jeff could have left his mobile phone on the bed all night while moving around the house. Now, personally, I'd argue this is the most damning piece of evidence against Jeff, as his own movements perfectly match that of Kat's and the door. There are two other points worth noting here. To begin with, Jeff's phone's data does confirm that he was awake after Kat had stopped moving. It's also confirmed that, in the middle of the night, the front door had been opened, and if no one else was in the property at the time, then it must have been Jeff. Detectives did look into the possibility that, maybe, one of Kat's OnlyFans subscribers may have stalked and killed her, 
but they ended up with no information to suggest any plausible suspects. In Jeff's defence, neighbours claimed that they heard no commotion on the Friday night or the Saturday morning, so it's very unlikely there was any sort of commotion or altercation on the front yard. But still, with the fingerprints, the activity reports, and the autopsy results, Jeff was very much backed into a corner. An arrest and a murder investigation that's gained nationwide attention. It's been more than a month now since Kathleen West was found dead. And tonight, her husband, Jeff West, is in jail, accused in her death. On February the 22nd, 2018, and after six weeks of heavy investigation, the authorities made the decision to arrest and charge Jeff West with the murder of his wife. He met with officers outside his home that morning, before being transported to Shelby County Jail. And with his bond set at $500,000, there was no way he was getting out before his trial. Before his trial began, Jeff was actually given a plea deal, and if he pled guilty to his wife's murder, then he would have actually been released immediately for his time already served. However, Jeff was insistent that he did not kill his wife, and rejected the plea deal. He ruthlessly defended his claims that she must have died by accident. And so, with no plea deal, Jeff would have to sit tight behind bars until his trial. Which, by the way, wouldn't happen until November 2020, almost three years since his wife's death. Now, moving into the legal proceedings of this case, try to remember all of the information and evidence we've talked about. The prosecution argued that Jeff had killed his wife with a blow to the head from a liquor bottle, and backed this claim up with the fingerprints, the security system, their device movements, and the autopsy report. A shirt found in a clothing hamper, and a towel from the master bedroom also contained traces of Kat's blood. In addition to all of this concerning information, they also highlighted the multiple pools of blood and the strangely placed bottle. The defence argued that Kat must have died from an accidental fall. They made no effort to include or suspect a third party, which means any evidence that pointed towards homicide would ultimately stay with Jeff. It was also highlighted that no blood or DNA was found on Jeff's clothes or his hands. There was no hair, scalp, or brain tissue found on the lucid absinthe bottle, and there was no suggestion of a struggle or a fight inside of the house either. Jeff stated on multiple occasions that he had never hit or hurt his wife, and he cited on numerous occasions, I have never hit her, I would never hurt my wife, not even accidentally. It was noted that this case probably became notorious in the media due to Kat's work as an OnlyFans model. This added much pressure to the jury, who were expected to make their decision without any bias whatsoever. Many text messages and voicemails were cited over the course of the five-day trial, which revealed that the couple often argued. These arguments were over trivial things that, on their own, did not warrant any cause for serious concern, but it did highlight a slight problem in the marriage. In a text message sent by Kat to Jeff only eight days before her death, she said, I know you're scared to tell me that you don't want to be with me, but it's only hurting me more by lying. In a response, in response to this message, Jeff said, If you don't want me, say it, baby. I want you. Do you want me? We never really talked about it after New Year's Eve. Kat warned him after this, telling him that he was throwing away 14 years of marriage. However, she also sent him nude photos after this, saying, Thank you for making me feel sexy. It was also revealed that Kat was not happy with her sex life. Where she wanted to have sex four or five times a week, Jeff couldn't keep up with this pace. She was also considering casual relationships with other women while in the marriage, which, granted, could have caused tension between her and her husband. Naturally, Jeff's parents defended him throughout his trial, but what surprised many was that Kat's parents also defended him too. In fact, they were arguably the ones fighting the hardest in his corner, and described him as the loving, devoted husband who cared a lot for his daughter. I mean, from the outside, Jeff seemed like a very soft and calm person, and honestly, there is almost no evidence to suggest that he's an aggressive or violent man. The man was smart, and with thanks to his military training, was taught to keep calm in tough situations. But then again, maybe that assisted his facade. The man could also be trusted with firearms, and above all else, seemed to be very happy in front of everyone around the family. However, the jury seemed to see right through his personality and focused on the evidence before them, and unfortunately for him, it didn't go in his favour. After just five hours of deliberation, they unanimously found William Jeffrey West guilty of the manslaughter of his wife. They believed that, on the night of her death, after he threw her phone out of the front door, Kat ran out to retrieve it. Jeff then followed her outside with the absinthe bottle, and hit her across the head with it. In a panic, he staged the scene by planting the bottle against her phone, before going back inside and acting ignorant to the situation. Jeff showed no reaction as the verdict was read, because, quite simply, he was in total and utter shock. 
After all deliberations, Shelby County Judge William Bostick handed down what he thought was a fair but not maximum sentence. The judge took Jeff's lack of criminal history, pleas from his daughter, mother and mother-in-law, and other mitigating factors into account. He therefore ordered Jeff West to serve 16 years in prison, minus three years already spent behind bars. Should nothing change to his case, Jeff will be released from prison in February 2034, and despite already appealing the verdict, this has been denied by the judge. You know, I'm really on the fence with this one. I could see Jeff getting extremely upset in the moment and accidentally killing her. But do I think he had planned her murder? Not at all. The device and security data are a great point of concern, however, so maybe there is guilt to be had after all. But again, if there is, I think it was an accident and he then tried to cover it up. The toughest part for Jeff is, if he accepted the plea deal at the very beginning of all of this, then he would now be a free man. But now, with the jury's verdict, he must serve an additional 13 years behind bars. Which, to be honest, I'm sure keeps him up almost every single night. Guilty or not, the death of Kathleen West was a tragedy for many. Accident or murder, her family and friends lost a very important person to them that night. With most of them defending Jeff and his character, you could argue that they feel as if they've lost two important people through her death. And to add to this, a daughter has now lost not one, but both of her parents. Kat was not your stereotypical housewife or mother. She was strong and confident, had her own agenda, and tried to live her life dancing to the rhythm of her own drum. She was also a very caring and nurturing mother, and a very good wife, all while supporting those that she loved. The media were quick to paint her as a woman who had a double life. Which, personally, I feel is quite far-fetched and sensationalised. I mean, sure, she may have been sexually quirky, but at the end of the day, she appeared to be a very loving mother and wife who was also much fun to be around. I hope that all of those affected by this very strange and unfortunate story will eventually find solace. So I think that wraps up my case here today, folks, but I do have one very important question for you. I'm sure you know what I'm going to ask you already, but do you think you did it? Try and factor in everything we talked about today, including the health data, the security data, and the fingerprints too. Do you think he murdered his own wife? Honestly, I am genuinely interested to see what the general consensus is going to be here, so again, please let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, thank you so much for being here with me for another video today by Coffeehouse Crime. If you found this case interesting or insightful, then please remember to like the video and subscribe if you haven't yet. I shall return very soon for another video, but until that moment arrives, remember to look after yourself, look after each other, and of course, stay safe. Thank you, and goodbye.